Five, two, one, drop. Hello. <laughs> Wait. No, we do it again. No, we're again. We're good. We're good. You good? We're good. Because, you know, we're always the one, like, talking. And so, when our producer is, like, talking more than us, I'm kind of like... Anyway, <laughs> welcome to Mocha in the Morning, where we're adding a little flavor yes. to your morning blend. And I'm about to eat the eggs yeah. to your basket. <laughs> I'm your host, Keisha Boyd, and this is my wonderful co-host, officially Jorge, my cafe con leche. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us on this Friday morning. We're so excited to have a great show. What's going on, darling? Ooh, I'm getting ready for the hunt. Ooh, we're going to be yeah. bunny hopping all You're over the, the place. Bunny Chasing what? Chasing bunnies. <laughs> chocolate. Chasing chocolate. I love it. That's kind of like the theme of this show. Yes, it is. <laughs> We have so much coming up for you guys, but... <laughs> but first, coffee. <laughs> Mocha in the Morning is brought to you in part by the Portico Cafe, where conversation, connection, and community create change. Welcome back to Mocha in the Morning on this Friday morning. Once again, I am Keisha, your co-host, and this is officially Jorge. And it's time for our steamers for the I, week. I, I, I'm gonna get a sip. I'm gonna get a sip. Hold on. Take a sip, honey. What do we have on tap? Okay, so I know that deep down inside you're really front end, but uh -huh. I cannot even like start without even talking oh about my the Game of Thrones premiere. Winter is here. It's, it's cold. Oh, it's cold out there. Oh my goodness. It was pretty warm in my house on Sunday, you know. Mm -hmm. Was it Sunday? I'm telling you. Game of I'm telling you. Once you, I think you're scared. You scared? I'm scared of what? You are scared that the first five minutes you're gonna be like, and then you're gonna be MIA for seven seasons. Right. <laughs> Until I catch up. I okay. I will admit that I have never watched Game of Thrones. All it seems like all of my friends, except a few, you know, right. who have mm -hmm. never seen it. But everybody's like, you have got to go hibernate and watch all the seasons. I'm to telling catch up. you. I'm telling you. I mean. It sounds like I'm gonna be so damn confused though. It's confusing, it's dramatic. I mean, it's horrific, it's exciting. I love all the shady moments. I saw I'd be writing, taking notes. I'm like, ooh, oh, I wanna say that. Gosh. And ooh, I'm, and I'm gonna say this, <laughs> and I'm gonna say that. Anyway, so it premiered, everybody's gagging, and mm. you know, I'm telling you. But I heard they gypped y'all on some time. Ooh, I was so mad with the cliffhanger. <laughs> ooh, I was so mad. It's okay though. <laughs> you know, but it's just awesome because like, you know, that show does have its, you know, moments of diversity. Uh-huh. And, um, and us um, well, people you know, of color appreciate that. Listen, our producer was just saying that a whole bunch of black people are watching Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? He's like, yes. Yes. Well, they are. Um, and, because HBO is doing the thing. Y'all know. Um, here's some sort of, yeah, it's just kind of sad. Well, in a way, for, I, mean, I don't know. So. I mean, if you're confident in who you are as a person, you will not be concerned that Insecure is not coming back for a while. As a fan of Insecure, <laughs> who is locked on the TV to watch Insecure, I was a little disappointed. I'm glad and happy because, you know, obviously yeah. Issa Rae is doing other things. Yes. Yvonne, Yvonne Orji, who is our co-star, is doing other things. So they won't be returning back to the screen until 2020. Yeah. Now, I mean, for me, I'm like, dang, girl, I know you're busy, but don't forget to... The project they put you on. That's true. Like, we're trying to, you know, That's like, a good thing we have our self-esteem. Right. Because <laughs> we don't need to be insecure. But I I mean, I have high, high, high expectations yes. for the next season of Insecure oh because it's gonna be gone for another year. I mean, what like I don't know, there's just like this explosiveness of like all of these fabulous female creators, doing directors. Great yes. I'm just like, I mean, they are doing the thing. And speaking of black female greatness. Yes. Oh my God, the shade was always real. Real. Yes. This weekend. <laughs> so Michelle Obama is yes. on her UK tour. Uh huh. Uh, our first lady, our yes. only first lady at this moment. Mm -hmm. And first of all, there was like, this epic, like, gag of all gag pictures. Mm -hmm. You have RuPaul, Michelle Obama, yep. 
and Adele. And Adele. Boom. I mean, really, is. Beyonce couldn't make it because she's probably busy. But then that way, we just been like, hey, we're that. Right. We're that. <laughs> so that picture came out. Everybody's, you know, going buck wild crazy for that. Mm-hmm. But it's more that her comments are trending and not the actual picture. Yes. So what was she saying? Okay, so basically, and I can speak like this because I come from, um, you know, a single parent home. Mm-hmm. So, of course, she's always going to get the questions about, like, you know, oh my God, so what's going on over there? Yeah. Right? You yeah. know, ooh, that makes your stomach kind of like, ugh, I got to answer this question. <laughs> Again. But she's so good. She's so she's good. Grace. So Grace. basically, she told um, the person who was uh, interviewing her, like, you know, you know what it's like when <laughs> uh, your parents get divorced? And then you have to go away to dad's house like, right. on the weekend. Mm-hmm. Well, being in America right now is like living with divorced dad. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. That's a hashtag. Oh That's my God. I can use that one. That's what America's going through. We're kind of living with divorced dad right now. <laughs> right? It's all fun and, yeah. and gravy. Yeah. So I don't know what kind of like drama there is about her saying that. I think they're trying to kick dust over something. That I mean, whatever, but it's kind of like I can say, girl, I feel you. I know exactly what I that mean. At is. the end of the day, it is what it is. I the love is pizza, food. but like, I mean, come on. I'd like some order too. <laughs> Hello, pizza is fun to you in like a catastrophic situation. Like, <laughs> <Right>. What? <laughs> All right, moving on. Oh my goodness. Speaking of catastrophic. Yes. Did you see it? Oh, yes, I did. The The Lion King trailer. I'm so excited. I can't wait to take my baby to see it. I mean, you're talking about Beyonce? Oh my goodness, I know. And the thing is, we're going to share like a little clippy clip. Okay. All right, we're going to the clippy clip, and then we'll come back, because I found an image of all of the people, all the actors, and who they're portraying. Check this out, check this out. I mean, Amazing. I don't know. I'm sitting here like. You all teary eyed. It's going to be great. I think as you mature, <laughs> things just start to, you, you get know, more like, in touch with your feelings. Yeah. Uh, my husband walking in the house, I'm like, what happened? I'm like, the Lion King. King. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Is Beyonce going to be in here? And Danny Glover. <laughs> oh my gosh. So stay tuned for yeah. that. Uh, look at that. But look at the cast. I know. Oh, look at the cast. It's, it's going to be amazing. great. It is. Yes. It really is. All right, now, as a former Northern Virginia right. resident, yes, girl, you've been residing everywhere. I'm a military brat. West Coast, Gulf Coast. But let me tell you, I love me some go go. Hey. DC is one of my favorite places to visit each year because I used to live in the area. I have several friends who live in the DMV area, and I love me some go go mm. still. And well, people are saying that yeah. um, go go is not the one that has to go. Hello. It's, so, a, it's a gentrification. Yeah, and that they're not having it. Right? Yeah, so it's good to see that there are some community leaders who are not of color who are speaking out yeah. against this. And it's kind of like, let culture, let, let it be. Stop. I, you know, d- I mean, at the end of the day, we, we witnessed this in D.C. Yeah. We witnessed this in different areas. And it's, I mean, if you gentrify the areas, the, the history and the culture is lost. Right. So somebody has to speak up and, and, and try to protect that. Yeah. So, so Go Go is going nowhere. It's gonna stay. That's right. Hey, hey. hey. you gotta bounce with it. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I guess after this, we have to go. That's right. <laughs> to a break. <laughs> we'll be right back with Pipe and Hot. <laughs> Welcome back to Mocha in the Morning, where we're adding a little flavor to your morning blend. I am your host, Keisha Boyd, and this is Officially Jorge, and it's time for Piping Hot. I love Piping Hot, and today we have a fabulous Mocha in the Morning contributor, Miss Jen Dobson, who is running things, and Miss CEO, get your voice yes. together. <laughs> Hi, good morning. Hey, Jen. Hey, girl. I love that top, honey. You look great. Thank you. All right, so let's get right into it. Let's right. go ahead it's, and jump and talk we about. We have to. We have to. We how have you doing? To. Ooh, not so well. No. Listen, Wendy Williams is the 
Hot, hot topic. topic. Hello? <laughs> the hot topic. Karma is something Hello. else. I'm telling you, honey. Listen. She filed for divorce. Yes. From Kevin Hunter. Check. Check. <laughs> she took her course back. Check. She's putting them off the payroll. <clears throat> check, check. <laughs> oh, no. Cancel that check. check. Cancel that check. <laughs> Listen. She is, I mean, but you know what? She's out. She's transparent. Yeah. She told her audience, look, I got to make some changes in my life. This sobriety house made me realize yeah. some things. And I'm sure the the new baby, you know. Yeah. Oh. Kind of helped Ooh. put that in perspective. Ooh, Ooh. Miss Jan, she just dropped out of that. Just, I'm just saying. Boom. She just broke the water just I'm like just that. I'm just saying. And listen, and then you have, I mean, there's so much going on with this so situation. Much. Jen, what do you think about this? Well, you know, honestly, I'm really proud of her, you know, because at first I was a little concerned that she was going to let this keep happening, you know, because it's happened for so long. So the fact that she took control and said, you know what, I'm everybody's going to talk about it because I am famous. I have to get over that and I need to do whatever is best for me. And it's time to let go. So look, 100 to her all day. You know what? I think a lot of times when entertainers do that mm -hmm. um, or, you know, people in the media, whatever. Right. I think it works. Yes, it does. It works. And they're just like, okay, this is the tea. You know, especially for someone like her who's constantly like, right. kind of gets a tea about everybody else. Exactly. And so here's the deal. You know, I do PR professionally. I'm a publicist, right? Mm -hmm. Nationally. Perfect. Nationally. Internationally. Listen, it is perfect for what she, I mean, as a PR person, I will always tell my clients, especially if you're in the limelight, the first thing you do in a crisis communication is speak up and defend you're always proactive not reactive so her being able to go out and say hey y'all this joint is messed up i got things going on i might be embarrassed and but whatever it is, i have to get over it for me and my son perfect because it, it doesn't leave room for everybody else to jump in and and do their thing she's like i'm gonna go ahead and put my own dirty laundry that's out. true and that's perfect for me i think that's a great tactic mm -hmm. for whoever her team is and what better person to do mm -hmm. it than like you yourself exactly. you know what i mean it's kind from of the before. horse's mouth before somebody else gets right. to spin on it. Yeah. You know, take take that lime light and mm -hmm. turn it into lemon light laid aid. Mm -hmm. Something like that. No, that's Just not don't working. deal with that's it. That's not gonna work today. Try to take your side when turn it sweet. Listen, <laughs> now, <laughs> now her husband, Kevin, released a statement as well. Yes. Saying basically that Wendy Williams is a great woman and I've done some wrong things and I need to get it right and we'll always be a family, right. but I gotta do yeah. some things. And apparently, different. like, I guess Wendy is not as fun yeah. as um, the toys that he's been playing with, hmm. allegedly. Alleged oh. Allegedly, there is a young man who he was supposed to have signed to his label who was put on by the, the, the mistress, uh -huh. brought to the table by the mistress, and he said that he That's had him put up in a condo and they had sexual relations, allegedly. Um, however, uh, Kevin Hunter's attorneys was like, no, this is not true. It's all false. He's just trying to extort money, blah, blah, blah. But this young man said he will stick with his truth. Whew. It's a lot. I mean, that's a lot. I mean, we could keep going. <laughs> Gotta move on. Wendy, you can't take the whole, it's ain't your show, Wendy. Right. <laughs> but we'd love to have you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Coachella. Coachella. Now. You know, I really don't have any desires to ever go to Coachella. Right? Like, why is this in the thing? script? I don't know. Yeah. But, <laughs> it's in the script because they're, you know, well, let's be honest. Coachella okay. is a, was, was a hippie type. Very light. You know. Alternative. Very yeah. California-esque. Woodstockish. Woodstockish. Rich Woodstockish. Correct. Dusty. Yeah. All that. Know. But now it's more diverse. You, you know, we saw last year that, you know, Beyonce shut that thing shut down. down. <gasps> Speaking of, is today the 17th? No, yes. no, 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 today's the 19th. No, 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 Beyonce's um, Netflix thing came out on the 17th. I haven't watched it yet. The oh. oh, sidebar. So two days ago, the Beyonce special about Coachella last year yes. came out. So make sure you go watch that. But anyway, Childish Gambino, um... Janelle Monet. Janelle Monet, but Childish Gambino and Riri's, oh my I goodness. I think, I think. Are you think they, no, he's married. I <laughs> think that Jen has something to say about this. <laughs> well, I mean, I, look, I like Coachella. I, I, I agree though, I wouldn't necessarily go 
um, it, because it's not my scene, but I love watching it. Um, and I think that Childish Gambino is like the best ever. Oh, I love him. I love how intelligent he is when he speaks. Um, you know, what he had to say about Nipsey was really powerful. Um, it really brought it all full circle again to me. Um, so, you know, I 100 to, to what they're doing at Coachella. They've definitely turned it around. Um, ever since Beyonce was on, it has become a completely different experience. So, you know, she should get all the credit for making Coachella what it is today and what it's going to be in the future. So, and I, I kind of feel like, finally, like, we got an invitation. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, hey, you can come well, you too. Know, once they experience the black magic, honey, Ooh. it's hard not to have it. And we're not talking the hair gel, although no. I have experienced that. And I love <laughs> it. And I gift it to all my friends every year. And yeah. No. The black magic, not the blue magic. The black <laughs> oh, magic. <there> <laughs> 75%. 75%. <laughs> but he got it. He got it. But yeah, Coachella, do your thing. We'll, we'll you know, we'll keep you guys posted on any, you yeah, know, extra yeah. great things they have going on. Now, my <sighs> father, who is an avid, <sighs> avid golfer, was super excited yes, to see that Tiger awesome. Woods yeah. came, I mean, made an, an incredible comeback. Incredible. Okay? Incredible. When I tell you, everybody was like, Get that money. Like claim your look, spot, Tiger. His hair may have not been there, but he yeah. came back. <laughs> now you was wrong as hell for that. <laughs> Listen, we had I was just telling the producer we gotta remind Tiger that his dad's name was Earl. <laughs> and he gotta, you know, get that hair together. But congratulations to Tiger Jin. Yeah. Look, I love Tiger Woods, okay? I actually got to see him at Valspar last year. Awesome. It was amazing to actually watch him up close and personal. I was like, and I'm not like one of those people that like turns into like a major fan. But when I saw him, I was like, oh my God, I love him. Oh my God. Um, but, you know, he has gone through a lot. You know, and most of it was self-inflicted. Yes. Um, you know, so he he did some things that caused a lot of um, conflict in his life. And then, of course, he had some medical issues as well that really kind of made him, force him to change his golfing style. And a lot of people said that he wasn't going to be able to come back from that um, because he really had to change his swing. Um, there was a lot that he had to do. And here it is, like, not even five years later, and he's been able to really kind of overcome that and come back. So... I'm 100% off for him. Yeah, and Serena um, Williams actually, you know, uh, made it, you know, sent out a tweet and made a comment how, I mean, she was in tears and this was so inspirational because as athletes, you know, she's kind of going through like the same thing. Yeah. You know, I'm just glad to see that Tiger Woods is back to swinging on golf clubs better than his ex wife. You know what? I can't even deal. <laughs> I cannot deal Ooh. with officially going to today. <laughs> but that was great. Listen, okay, I know who's going to be swinging in a minute they don't get their life together, okay? <laughs> These transgender folks yes. in the military, okay? Ooh. So transgender servicemen have been banned from the U.S. Form, um, like, uniform services. Like, yeah, like in, out, in, out, in, out. Right, this is like such a crazy thing to keep going back and forth on, like, we're talking about like the security of our nation. Correct. Okay, you can't like these are people. First of all, to be in the military, to be in the military in the United States of America, that's a volunteer situation. You know what I mean? In some countries, like the minute you turn eighteen, it's a wrap. You have to serve one, two, you know, how many years, whatever. In the U.S., you don't have to do that. So I, I'm kind of like, let's just start with that. Don't like why are you trying to boot out people who are volunteering? right to protect and serve our nation like take everyone that you can it's a volunteer thing let's just start there jenna like you pick it up from that well look i i don't even i don't understand it at all to me it makes no sense i mean who cares whether they're transgender or gay or straight or who cares? Like, how does that change their ability to do what they need to do? I, I just don't get it at all. Like, it makes absolutely no sense to me. I think this country, you know, it's like we take one step forward and three steps back. Um, you know, it doesn't make sense that we're back in a place where we're questioning whether transgender should be in the military. Right. I, yeah. 
It shouldn't Absolutely. be a question at all. It shouldn't be a thought at all. Um, and it's really sad to see that we're back in that position in this country um, to be worried about things like that. But, you know, I'm, I'm not surprised. Um, we have the president that we have and, 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 you know, we have to recognize that these type of very, um, you know, sexist and, and homophobic issues are going to continue to arise, at least until 2020, fingers crossed, something changes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Now, what has changed, though, mm -hmm. is what's happening uh, at Morehouse. Morehouse. Listen, Morehouse is one of our most prestigious historically black colleges and universities in Atlanta, Georgia. I mean, prestigious. It is the mecca for black men. Yeah, I mean, Kia, actually, if you watch her Weekend Recap, yeah. she brought this up about what Morehouse was doing. She couldn't be with us today yeah. because her hair was on her order, but it's cute, though. <laughs> we love you and miss you. Listen, so Morehouse, let's talk about this, because, you know, uh, Chillette and I, our producer, were talking about this offline, and I had a question, and I, I hope that, you know, we could talk about it so I can understand clearly. Now, they have decided to accept transgenders, um, male, mm -hmm. into their university. Mm -hmm. It is an all-male university. Right. However, they will not accept a born male who identifies as a woman. Okay. Okay? So... I'm going to break it down. Break it down. Okay, I'm going to break understand. it down. Okay, so you have what you're physical sex says, right? Mm -hmm. And those are body parts. Correct. Right? Things that swing, things that don't swing. Things that bounce, things that don't bounce. Right. Okay. And then you have your gender, which is what you identify with, but in here, mm -hmm. like on the inside, your mind, the demon, everything that makes you who you are, that's not on the outside. Okay? Mm -hmm. So it's like a trap. Right? And so the thing is, with this Morehouse situation, if you are a female yeah. and you have transitioned to a male, that means you are a male now. And this is an all-male school. So now you can enter. But if you are a male who is transitioning to a female, this is, this is the key point. You're male now, but you're transitioning. So when you're done, you're a girl. So you can't be a girl at an all-male school, even though on the outside of your body, you might have a bat, but you're on your way to a catch right. but, but But is that the same as no. identifying? Mm. Now, what it said was born male identifying as a woman. Right. Well, born with male physical parts. Parts, yes. So if you're, so if you still have your physical male parts, but you you identify as a woman. Yeah. Well, because it, typically, if you are not even if you're trans transitioning. But if you, but if you're, but the thing is, I think once you identify, once you know, like you're in the wrong body. Okay. You're pretty much gonna think like. The body that you would like to be in. So you're talking about dress and right. all that stuff. Exactly. Okay. So sometimes, you know, because transitioning, uh, I mean, it's pretty, you know, expensive. It's, it's complicated. It's expensive. Yeah. The psychological stuff. Yeah. You know, all the, you know, the, the drugs that you have to take. I mean, it's not like, hey, I'm going to wake up tomorrow and be this. Like, right. you know, it's not like that. And I think a lot of times, you know, we need to kind of sit back mm -hmm. and, and let people kind of, you know, be. Transition through their life. Now, how they see I, I have a question, Jen. Um, on this, I know you probably have your comments, but I know you work a lot in higher education. And one comment that someone on my page said was that you know they sh they're sure that this decision was um, affected by money, meaning grants and and federal funds that they get. And one, they don't want to be sued, and because it's such. A hard process a lot of people don't go all the way through with it especially minorities and African Americans don't go all the way through the transition so the the number of people that will be affected and the college and the, the admissions that will be affected it's very very nominal very 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 small what do you, what do you say about that well I mean unfortunately this is still kind of a gray area for many colleges and universities um, 
you, you know, there's always, they're always looking at finances. They're always looking at money and, and how they're going to be affected um, financially, of course. I think ultimately, though, Morehouse's decision is probably less about money and more about doing the right thing, or at least to me, it seems that way. Um, because they probably won't have a large amount of transgender um, men coming to that school. Because keep in mind that in the black community, it's still very taboo. And not to say that it doesn't exist, of course. But I think they're going to get a very small percentage of people coming in that are transgender um, males. Um, but the fact that they're opening it up and saying, you know what, we definitely still welcome you with open arms, I think is fantastic. Um, and I definitely feel that it makes sense for them to not allow for transgender females, you know, men, born men that are now transgender or going to be transgender. But I'm sure there's going to be gray areas with that as well. I mean, keep in mind that if, if, a, if a male, a born male wants to go to Morehouse and decides that they're maybe going to wait to transition, I'm sure they'll have the ability to still be included. Um, in the school. So it's going to be hard for them to start to make um, those transitions, but 100% very proud of them. I think it's going to put them on the map um, for a lot of transgenders to feel more comfortable going to the school. Um, so, you know, 100%, I agree with them and I'm very impressed. And I think it speaks a lot too for people of color to be like on the forefront of this. Mm -hmm. You know, what's happening like in our political climate, and then we have this historic and prestigious all male, you know, black university saying, but you know what we're gonna do yeah. is this. Yeah. And I think that is a huge statement. Yeah. And, and, and that's from a place of leadership. Yeah, and, and there, there are several universities who have um, openly and publicly shared their, their acceptance of transgender. And I think we'll start to see more um, that will fall in line. So, you know, all right. Lord Jesus is a fire. It's a fire. Listen, churches, which is not a laughing matter at all. No, it's not. Um, three Louisiana churches were burned or yes. caught fire um, last week. And, you you know. Well, this is the thing. Well, I mean, this is not new news. Correct. Right? And it's just, you're not hearing a lot about this, you know, on the national broadcast. Right. Up until. The day. Um, yeah. <laughs> up almost. until. Notre Dame. And then all of a sudden, you're seeing like everyone in this influx of money and euros going right over there yeah. to rebuild that church. And I will say that because of that, it has brought attention to this. To the Louisiana church. Like, don't let the way it happened, you know, sending money over there when like, you know, yeah. maybe we should just kind of like. Try to work on these. Work on these churches. Right. You know? Because, you know, and this is true. Like we should use our resources here. And support the things that need support here because there was a man over there that donated two hundred million dollars to yeah. help to restore the Notre Dame. Okay, yeah. so uh, yeah. So my highest husband and uh, the father, which and they're you know they're French citizens, so yeah. that makes total sense. Yeah. Um, but you know, it does have its historic value and the priceless uh, pieces of art and stuff like that. But at the same time, um, I'm just glad that. Uh, we were also able to include those churches, uh, the churches in Louisiana, because you know that was arson. Absolutely, because they were all black churches yeah. that were being burned down. Exactly. So I'm just glad that. And they have a sus suspect, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jen, what do you think about that? So, <laughs> there's always been historically a disconnect between what we care about um, and what the world cares about when it comes to black and brown spaces and when it comes to white and European spaces. And that's the unfortunate part is that, you know, most people, um, you know, as a whole are not um, as caring or considerate or understanding about what's going on in the black community, even in our own community. Um, you know, you'll hear a lot of black people that will support Notre Dame that have never supported these black churches or tried to, to, to donate money. Um, and, and we have a long way to go in fixing that problem. You know, I feel really bad about uh, Notre Dame and what happened. You know, hopefully nobody has been seriously hurt um, or gone through any, any major trauma. 
Um, but, you know, especially in the United States, I mean, historically, black churches have been burned down to the ground, you know, for as far back as we can remember. Right. And we just get the resources or the consideration that we deserve. Um, but I am very glad that with Notre Dame, with everything that's going on, that people are saying, you know what, hey, remember these three black churches, let's not forget about them and let's make sure that we're putting money there as well. So yeah. that's definitely a plus, it's definitely I like, you know, a step in the right direction. So Absolutely. You know, we'll see what happens, but we gotta do better. Absolutely. That, that's that, that's why she's on the show. Cause she, like, hey, she, she bring you, it. You, you, <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining us this week, Jen. We enjoyed your girl. Yes, girl. Thank see you, you next so week. Very much. Mwah. Have a good weekend, girl. Thanks, bye. And we'll be right back with this week's Mocha Moment. show we've had this week thank you for joining thank us you. make sure you follow us on instagram twitter youtube on at mocha morning show send us your mocha moment yes okay we want to see all the beautiful pictures and videos all that. of you with your family your co-workers just living life and doing great things talk to us about this week's mocha moment you know i can't because <laughs> i'm so jealous all right so our producer's niece had a birthday party. Yes, little Karina. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she had a unicorn. Oh. And this is what she looks like. <laughs> I've never seen anything so, so cute. gorgeous, and beautiful. Like, I can't stand it right now. <laughs> I'm so jealous. <laughs> Why can't that be my life? I, I just, I can't. I look at this. I don't. She's adorable. So. It's so magazine ready. So magazine ready. <laughs> and you can be too. Yes. To send us your Listen, moment. Listen, yes. And shout out to her mom, Renee, and dad, and Auntie Chalette. Yeah, they all And big brother. <laughs> One time for the Davis family. All right, guys. Thank you for joining us, joining us this week. We'll be back next week. Same time, same place, right here. <laughs> Hey, Happy it's not the go -go. I can't wait to show your Easter outfits and hats. Yeah. And stay home for the derby. Yes, derby. <laughs> <laughs>